I think I had a call and people were asking me what would be the new types of hacks. Uh, and people were saying like, oh, this will be NFTs and then we'll see like uh, like dApps being wrecked. And, so, and I said, well, if we actually moving to this interoperability world where you have multiple different blockchain operating and they all have bridges linking each other's, then this is where most of the hacks will go because we're talking about millions and not like just like millions in terms of like 10 million or 5 million. But if the bridge or if something is actually a securing multi-billions uh, uh, worth of, of assets, then this is basically where people will be focusing most of their time to be able to exploit it. And and this is exactly what happened uh, yesterday with the Poly Network. It's basically, the, the thing is like, we'll have more exploits, we'll have more people hacking into it. And this is the only way that we can make DeFi safe. It's like people, like over the past year and a half, they were like, trying to say, oh, flash loan, we should stop flash loan because flash loan are bad. And because, no, this is actually, flash loan need to be seen as in traditional finance, you have like big VCs uh, like considered as wells and they used an enormous amount of funds and they make big move, big arbitrage on the market. This is the same as having unlimited access, not unlimited access, but having huge access to money and flash loan is exactly the same. No flash loan, no DeFi. And it's exactly what's happening right now. Because like those bridges will be securing, or those blockchain will be securing multi-billions assets, worth of assets, then you can be 100% sure that it's very likely that most of the hikers will be spending weeks and months trying to see if there is an opportunity for, for an exploit. And, and this one that we've seen in, in Poly Network, it's, it's not... It's actually very advanced in the sense that the person who done it understand very nicely, understand low level programming, and then could actually understand the implication of making sure that, for example, a manager, like a contract could be, even if you whitelist the specific address, or you could actually make sure that you, it's, it's like the, the pickle jar uh, hack. It's like you come and you say, oh, you are this person, and the contract believe that you are this person. And this is the kind of hacks that are very fascinating because this will happen more and more if we don't focus. I mean, building a DeFi project is difficult because you need to not necessarily be good in programming, but also understand the cryptonomics and also the economic attacks. And and this is actually what is make our space so fascinating is because you can have the best couple of lines of coding like they are super secure, but because this project, this dApp will operate in the world of I call it like Disneyland, and it depends like how they are connected to each other. And then you might actually have the most secure piece of, of tech that you built, but because this piece of tech is operating in a, in a wild, wild west, then you might actually be at risk. And this is what happened yesterday. And we talked about half a billion, I mean, some of million US dollars, and, and this will have uh, regulatory implication because now 600, almost half a billion US dollars being hacked, triggered, I mean, DeFi has been losing a lot of uh, people are being wrecked and, and lost a lot of funds over the past few years. But when you have a company that lose half a billion US dollars in one shot, then obviously trigger a lot of uh, uh, legal regulation implications. And, and we, need, we have to expect a lot of institutions or regulatory uh, framework being built or actually supporting their, their, their thesis about saying that DeFi is dangerous and all different things. After the yeah. hack, I received like so many messages about Curve and saying, hey, can you guys stop the contract at Curve? Can you guys do all the different things? And the, the, the thing is like Curve is fully permissionless. You could take like maybe emergency DAO, like something making like, but the thing is like, it's, it's a protocol. It's being used for swapping assets. And it's a good question. Like USDT was uh, immediately blocked the transfer yep. uh, of found from, from the hacker. Uh, to to be able to send those funds because Tether is is not permissionless. You know, it's they have a mm -hmm. fully control of, of of the assets there, and they can do whatever they want. And and but then it's good when someone has steal money and then they can stop it. But then also like the vision of DeFi, like decentralized finance, is to be able to to have something that cannot be stopped. So then it's always the question about okay, where is the line? Where is the the red line? If you build backdoors, if you build something that you can stop, then you're basically giving tools to traditional finance to stop you. It's like saying, oh, we need to stop 
the access to internet globally, worldwide, because some people are using internet to buy guns and kill people. Well, the problem mm -hmm. is not the internet. You know, the problem is actually those people trying to use, they just use it as a tool. And all the different questions is actually unknown. It's very difficult to answer them because it's always like, yeah, but what if someone is doing something bad, then we need to stop him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at the same time, we build a tool that cannot be stopped. So what you're trying to say is, let's stop something that is against of what we're actually trying to do. You know, like this kind of, yeah, it's a long, it's a, it's, I think it's, it needs a lot of philosophical reasoning and, and, and debates.